Hello, this is John Carlo, and this is the second part of a four-part video series. In this particular part, I'll be going through investigation one, where we look at table of values, and in the context of this lesson, where I'm helping students identify the difference between a linear and a nonlinear relation by looking at a table of values, algebraic equation, or a graph. Now, what I'll be making use of, as you can see, is notebook software. Uh, you'll also see me using the Sentio Student Response System, uh, but also make reference to uh, SmartSync, which is classroom management software. So let's uh, get into it. Uh, I already went through the introduction and in a video, a previous video you, that you might have watched, and now I'm ready to uh, do the first investigation, uh, which is using a table of values. To identify the difference between a linear and a nonlinear relation. What I always do is I start off by doing some vocabulary, so going through some of the words that they're going to be seeing in this lesson. Now, for this particular investigation, they need to know what a first difference is, uh, and what I'll do is I'll demonstrate for them uh, how to actually calculate the first difference. Now, what, what you might want to do, and what I usually do, uh, is I'll make use of my page recording feature. So I'm going to record myself going through an example of calculating the first difference and the reason why I do this is because later on I'm going to have students uh, calculate first differences themselves and there we go and instead of having to go through multiple examples uh, students can then use this rec uh, playback feature uh, to see how I I calculated those first differences. I'll do the same uh, to calculate the the x differences on this table of values and now I'll actually start my investigation. Now this the way I, I set up this investigation uh, is I actually have this uh, hidden so the students actually don't see uh, that whole part uh, and I tell them that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sending them a file that's gonna have a bunch of table of values graphs that they're going to be working from and I'll show you what that looks like so here's the file and this is where I make use of the smart sync so I'll actually push this file to all the students uh, and I'll actually be broadcasting this to them so that uh, they're just watching for instructions and before they actually can manipulate and what I'm going to get them to do from each file as it states there from each page is they're going to be using what they learned in terms of calculating x differences and first differences and they'll be finding the x differences and first differences uh, they can use a calculator uh, if necessary uh, and then they're going to be uh, taking out this little tab that'll tell them whether or not this relationship is linear or not and so what you'll see on on these subsequent pages uh, is various other tables of values where they're going to be calculating x differences and first differences and what I'd have them do right now is actually work through uh, these different tables of values and then wait for my instructions and as that's happening so as students are working together and I can also if I have SmartSync use the co collaboration tool so I can which if you're not sure what it is it, it uh, randomly groups students uh, into groups where they'll be working together on a particular file that you sent them in this case this particular file and in the meantime, as students are working through that, I'll invite students to come up to the board uh, to fill in this example. So as you see here, I had students already fill in these tables of values, the x differences and y differences. Once all the students have finished their files, and I have students that have come up and filled in these tables of values on the board, I'm going to pull down this drop down, and I'm going to invite students to, in their groups, discuss how they think they'd be identify the type of relationship just by looking at the table of values. So these are the table of values that appear in their worksheet. I want them to go through those tables of values and look to see the type of relationship and I want them to see if they can make a connection. In other words, if I just give them this tables of val this table of values here, just by using the information from this table of values, how would they be able to identify that it was a linear relation and so I'd give them some time to to discuss and to conjecture what they think uh, it would be and then I'd probably enter into a group discussion uh, to see what uh, the class as a group can agree on and then I'll throw them an additional example 
And this example uh, also appears in their file, so I will instruct them to go to the next example, and here's the example there. And what's interesting about this example is uh, most students would go ahead and calculate the first differences, and they'll notice that these first differences are all the same. But what I've noticed over the years is that most students always forget to calculate the x differences, in which case these x differences are not the same. And so students would automatically, the majority of students would uh, agree that this, this relationship is linear. And what I'd probably do here is make use of my, my sentio. And what I'd do is I'd insert uh, a yes-no question. And the question that I would ask in this case, and maybe I want to do a, a quick question, so I'm going to just hold the icon. Uh, let me show you how to do it a little bit quicker. So there's a drop-down menu here, and I'm just going to go and do an instant uh, yes or no. And it's going to set up a question on the next page. And what I'm going to ask is, is this a linear? A little bit of a delay on my uh, smart board relation. Now I look like a grade 3 writing. That's okay. And if I want to really make it authentic, uh, I can actually grab this table of values, copy it, paste it here. And I want to probe the entire class Once to I've see Once I've given each student they... enough time to answer this question, I'm going to stop my Sentio uh, question. I'm actually going to take a look at the, the results and as I suspected uh, 15 students thought it was a linear and uh, about 10 11 students thought it wasn't linear and at this point I'm not going to tell them what the correct answer is uh, but I will tell them that you know this is a common uh, misconception or a common um, a problem area on tests where students are split 50 50 un, un, unknown with whether or not it's linear nonlinear and so what I'll do here is I'll actually show uh, which students know in this case I signed in anonymously, but if had my students signed in with their usernames, I'd show them all the students that said no and all the students that said yes. Uh, safe, still maintaining the safety because about half the students said yes versus no. But the reason why I show who said yes and who said no is I want all the students who said yes to partner up with the student who said no. And I want them to enter into discussion and to use uh, the previous slide and make use of let's say the graph as well and what they learned the previous day with drawing lines and curves of best fit uh, to identify whether or not uh, they f believe that this is uh, indeed a linear or a nonlinear relation and what I would do next is the same graph the same question I would actually start it again clear the results to take this assessment again I want to clear it yes and I want to start this question again and I want to see if there's been a change in, in the student's opinion based on the conversations that they just had. Once I've given the students enough time to respond, I'm going to take a look and what I noticed was there there was a, a change in students' opinion. So after we've, the students have gone through uh, this investigation uh, and they have uh, seen this, what I like to call a an uh-oh or an oops type scenario, so a scenario in which uh, most students I, I usually find uh, have difficulty, I'd invite them to summarize what they've just learned. And what I usually do is, if the students have access to a computer, if it's a one-to-one -one environment or for a computer lab, I'll have this file already there and I'll invite them to uh, type in uh, their description of what they've learned. Um, otherwise, what I would do uh, is I'd have this printed out and what once I've given them an, a, enough time I'll reveal uh, what my definition description is and I'll have them make adjustments uh, to theirs. Now that we've finished uh, identifying a linear versus nonlinear with a table of values we're going to move on to identifying a linear versus nonlinear with a graph and so if I go back to my introductory page I can check mark off that we have now successfully completed uh, identifying a linear versus nonlinear by looking at a table of values. And that concludes part two of this lesson.